All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and uh, just starting a little bit later than usual because you know just had a lot of stuff to catch up on. You know, gaming, uh, watching uh, a little bit of Force and see what's going on. Also doing a little research about the coronavirus and stuff. I have to, I have to say, I'm quite uh, unhappy and displeased, but. Us conservatives, I mean, that lack of empathy is really showing, you know, because they allow fear, ugh, they allow fear and pretty much ignorance to, like, you know, I mean, that's kind of like one of the problems with just saying science is all a scam, right? Because, uh, you know, it's not all a scam, you know, there's a reason why we're actually flying people back into this country. It's not like, you know, oh, well, you know, just fly them back. I mean, they're not that careless, right? Problem is, I already deleted a lot of my previous uh, political videos to, you know, kind of try to safeguard myself against future deplatforming. Because if I behave the way, let's say, Mike Cernovich does, well, that's kind of not going to be working for someone like me, right? Because they're just going to go after, you know, Photon. They're going to go after Microsoft, right? And they're definitely, well, I mean, I don't know about Photon, but I don't, I wouldn't trust them to, you know, withstand the might of the globalist SJW feminazi army. Right, not not to mention the certain countries in this world that cannot be criticized. Though they might actually get wiped out by the coronavirus, because um, and that's what we're talking about. Is uh, turns out that the coronavirus is actually spreading. Right, uh, there's a different strain of mutation in Iran, and everyone's still crowding uh, together to vote and coughing on each other. So pretty much, and it's Iran with trade sanctions. So you can imagine what's going to happen. Right, they have no electricity. They have backwards ass medical tech. Yeah, it's going to get pretty bad. And I, I'm not going to mention which countries because I don't want to risk getting uh, uh, YouTube banned. But uh, there are countries, and particularly a couple of them are not are up to very bad, up to no good, right? You know, I can't name the names. And, um, yeah, they're going to get infected by the coronavirus. So this might actually be God's wrath, surprisingly, right? You know, you know, when I had to shutter my political videos, I used to talk a lot about God's wrath, right? Now that I'm more aware of my thoughts, you know, I have to be careful because, you know, that could be Satan making me feel good and righteous. And that's and that's actually not a good thing, right? You know, so that, that, that's a, a applied knowledge from Jesse Lee Peterson's Christian church teachings. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, I, I have to admit, you know, it, it is all quite ironic, you know, and I'm sitting here comfortably in New York City, one of, like, the greatest, uh, I mean, yeah, the taxes here are insane, but at least, you know, unlike, say, California, you know, at least we run things pretty well here. I mean, we kind of have to, right? So, um, yeah, but, I mean, who knows? Maybe that will change. So, but, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I see all these people at Brightburn like, well, don't fly them there, risk to everybody. Yeah, that's true. And Nick Fuentes says the same thing, but in a kind of nicer, in a much nicer way. Yeah, but there's a reason why we do that is because there are citizens. If my wife or kid was over there and there was a reasonable chance to bring them home, but still keep them in isolation because I don't want them in a fucking foreign country. Cause it's my fucking wife. It's my fucking kid. Yeah, I want them back. And so would they. Right. And it's just, uh, you know, it's just irritating to me that conservatives, a lot of them just don't fucking understand that. Right. Until until it is they, you know, it's their loved ones that have that problem or worse. They'll just say, yeah, just leave them there. It's like, what the fuck's the matter with you? <laughs> right. And that's part of the problem, with, too, with ignorance is because they don't realize that, yes, we take precautions. Right. Now, I read because I didn't finish the uh, Nick Fuentes stream that he did last night. But I, uh, I read on on Twitter, he mentioned Mr. McTor or whatever, you know, anti-bully or whatever, that, um, uh, what should I call that the CDC itself explicitly told the State Department not to bring them here, and then the Trump administration was like, you know, go, basically, go fuck yourself, and they brought them in anyway. Um, so that's probably going to be why a lot of people are getting nut, uh, nutty about it, but that's probably what it was, and it's, you know... And now, I will have to admit, it is a little crazy to pack the infected people on the same plane with the non-infected people. Because obviously, you know, you're going to reinfect everybody. But everybody was in quarantine and wearing suits and stuff. So proper precautions were taken. And then once they did arrive in America, all of them, uh, even the non-infected people were apparently sent to quarantine anyway. So, you know, all the scientific procedures are being, uh, whatchamacallit, are uh, being followed. And the reason why we also want to do that is because we need to be able to study the fucking virus now. 
right? Because this is another problem. A lot of conservatives like, we don't, it's in a different country. We don't have to worry about it. That's the most retarded thing you can do because it's a fucking disease. So it's going to spread. It's like, oh shit, it's here in America. What well, we got to start? We got to start the research. You can't do that. It's too late. It's like insurance. You have to have it before it happens, dumbasses. And it's just like so frustrating because as long as we keep doing stupid shit like that and saying stupid shit like that, see, that's why I need to get famous. So I can like counteract a lot of this shit, all right? Guess what's going to happen? Yeah, it justifies the liberals' experience, all right, or existence, right, in terms of ideology, and that's why we get we can't have nice things, and that's why we're going to have fucking Bernie Sanders one day, or God forbid that fucking crazy bitch uh, AOC, right? How would you like that? You know, it's like you know, oh, so maybe next time don't be such a unempathetic asshole, all right? You know, the, again, the precautions are taken. We're obviously well aware of the risk, but the risk of not doing anything, just leaving them there, is actually greater. But I don't understand why the government just doesn't say that, right? Because, I don't know, it's like, this is what happens when everyone's in a fallen state. Like, the truth just cannot get out. And you know? I'm stuck with, you know, my <laughs> my shitty little channel. So, you know, that's just how it goes. But with that being said, yeah, you know, at least Nick Fuentes still is, you know, pretty aware not to go fear monitoring. He's just like, yeah, you might want to stock up on med supplies, which actually might not be a bad idea, right? Because if an outbreak does happen, right, because mistakes do happen, um, and in fact, maybe sometimes no mistakes happen, right? I've already said globalists have a huge incentive to actually stamp out this virus because if they don't, uh, control and social order break down, everyone instantly becomes a right wing person, right? I mean, I don't watch zombie shows or movies or whatever, but I think the popular one is The Walking Dead, right? Notice. Notice that political ideology doesn't matter there, because if you don't embrace right-wing mentalities and mindsets you, and pick up guns and shit, you're going to die. <laughs> so, you know, you, that's the last thing the globalists want. Well, you know, that's why they they hate us so much, because everyone's turning into a right-wing, uh, you know, agitator, because, you know, we're actually, you know, getting annoyed with the globalist control. So the virus is something that is just going to, like, what's the globalist going to do with a virus? You can't control people once it gets out of control, so... You know, <clears throat> but with that, that with that being said, globalists are still humans, so there's an actual limit to what they can do. So uh, yeah, take some precautions. I mean, I'm personally not going to do it because I don't actually give a shit. Also, I spend most of my time indoors, so I'm technically already self quarantined in a way. And I've got my hydrogen peroxide, I've got my sanitation shit, but I mean, ultimately, we if I get infected, it's not even going to matter anyway, we, you know, so, um, yeah, uh, but actually, if I get infected, being this isolated, I mean, it's over for, for America, right, all of New York City is just going to die from the coronavirus, probably including me, because it specifically uh, kills Chinese people, uh, even the, actually, even the um, Telegraph is now admitting that uh, bioweapons are now a real thing, right? Uh, let me see. Posted it on my thing here. Uh, let's see. Not surprisingly, this got nothing, right? 282, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not going to play this thing, but basically it had some expert on CNBC, and he said the, you know, this is where I got the Iran thing from. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of ironic. I always thought that war was going to take out the Middle East, but it's actually going to be the coronavirus. All right, so this actually got some stuff, right? Uh, and I told people bioweapons target specifically to ethnic groups is a real thing. Now the globals are admitting it, right? This is on fucking the Telegraph, all right? They're now actually admitting this. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got three link clicks. We have two people, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so no one really clicked my profile. So a lot of times people just click the profile just because they want to see who, who's actually retweeting this shit. And of course, Trump's not going to do anything about Silicon Valley censorship. So, uh, yeah. But I mean, there's that spiel. And then, of course, thinking about my game, what I'm going to put in. I mean, basically, all the stuff that I'm learning from Jesse Lee Pearson is definitely going into the quest text. So, um, yeah, it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty good. And I did a lot of coding yesterday because a lot of it was a repeat. So I'm actually flying through the RPG course because it's essentially the same as all the previous courses. So, you know, hopefully, uh, I mean, like I could try to, I could definitely bang it out and then cancel before the February, uh, 25th of February. So I only pay for one month because my month is almost uh, up. But I think I actually want to still learn other stuff before I go on the Playmaker because it's, 
Because it's important that I have a foundation of coding before I go into Playmaker, because it'll be make it'll make things easier. And eventually I will create custom actions. That's what Playmaker calls it, so that I can put in my own C sharp programming code. Um, so uh, yeah, because I'm also trying to think. Like Playmaker doesn't have an explicit battle royale function, specifically the damage shield that closes in. Um, but I mean, I can watch the tutorials on YouTube, right? Get a cheap one. I think the one, the number one search result was like build a battle royale in twelve minutes, right? So it should be pretty easy for me to code. Um, so and funny enough, I could use some of the old assets from my uh, Zenva learning course. Right? They have the damage shield, and then I could just import that or something. Actually, it's just a simple um, sphere, and you just cut it in half. So it's actually not that... Uh, actually, you don't even have to cut it in half. You just make a sphere, and then just shrink it. Uh, so anyway, um, I don't really care about the news today, because obviously it's just Saturday. Um, and of course, you know, markets are still roiling. Uh, oh yeah, so before we start... Um, Part of the problem is the coronavirus is actually spreading to a lot of cases throughout the world. Most of it's still concentrated in the China and it's not spreading to South Korea region. But um, uh, what should I call it? Uh, the way I interpret it is uh, they're not telling us the race of these people, right? Because they just say people are dying, like, you know, like two or three people have died in Italy. Uh, and there's like 70 to 80 cases. And a lot of those cases are in northern Italy. So... I mean, I'm going to assume that they're Chinese or Asian people, right? Because if they're not revealing the race, then, yeah, I mean, that's obviously, you know, don't be racist towards people. I mean, that's actually true, but I would still like to know the race. Uh, and the dissident rights sources aren't even covering the coronavirus, so. Um, I don't know, but, um, what should I call it? <coughs> <laughs> Who knows, maybe I have the coronavirus. Maybe that's why I'm getting, I'm coughing right now. But, uh, I don't know, it's going to be some. I mean, I think that might be making people nervous because a lot of sh uh, businesses in northern Italy are actually shutting down because of the coronavirus. Uh, I guess I'm going to call it a mini outbreak, right, because they're taking precautions. So that actually is going to have a pr effect on the economy, too. Uh, but uh, let's see, it's February 22nd. I mean, it's not even going to get warmer until like one month from now, right, because then it'll be the spring equinox, I think it's called. Or, yeah. Spring and fall is equinox, winter and summer are um, solstices. So, yeah, we're like 29, 30 days, because it's March 21st, uh, from spring. So once it gets warmer, then this coronavirus should be uh, more or less contained. And then we'll have the vaccine ready, probably, or some kind of test vaccine, probably, by the end of this year, when, it, you know, it gets colder again. So... Yeah, but anyway, uh, normie interest for this week is still pegged at 11, so not a whole lot going on. Um, cryptocurrency still seems pretty flatlining, so I guess people are still just like taking a break. In fact, uh, 24 hour volume is down to 132.2 billion, with a Bitcoin dominance of 62.8%. Yeah, so everyone's just taking a breather after like a crazy couple of weeks. You know, it was up a lot, and they were trying to go up, it didn't work, now it went down, and now people are just like, you know what, you know, coronavirus is getting, you know, spread around, you know, people aren't thinking properly, I'm just going to take a chill. And then that's pretty much what we're seeing, right? You know, between Bloomberg, you know, uh, sh uh, starting up a shitstorm here, however, he does seem to be already going down. In fact, everyone seems to be going down. Which I have to admit, I'm quite uh, disappointed in Bloomberg. You know, I would expect him to have uh, a little more pull, right? But, I mean, like Nick Fuentes said, he's not charismatic like Trump is, so. And even Trump's mocking him, too. It's like, not so easy to do what I did, is it, Bloomberg? <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, you know, and I guess Trump realizes, yeah, he's actually a nice version of me, so I better stick it to him before, uh, you know, he becomes a huge threat, right? Because Trump knows he can beat Bernie Sanders, right? Because it's, cause, you know, Bernie's just some old crazy communist kook, right? And a lot of people support that. The problem is, uh, most people still don't support that, and that even includes all the moderate, the center left, and the boomer liberals who could who probably hate conservatives, but they hate communists even more because they know Bernie Sanders is going to come in and actually steal all their ill-gotten wealth, right? And right now, Democrats are the party of the rich, so you know 
I mean, they were willing to lie to everybody. When it comes to their material and money goods, they ain't gonna lie. They're gonna they're gonna embrace the truth. They're they're gonna they're gonna make sure Bernie gets tanked. That's why they're accusing him of being a Russian asset now. So uh, <laughs> it's like you know I can't you know I always thought that maybe eventually with all the censorship, right wing people would take up arms and go on a mass murder spree. Um, but now that they're doing this Russia shit, I'm now actually thinking it's actually going to be the left wing communist Bernie bros are, who have, who do have a history of actually killing people, right? They stab people in trains. There's a story on that. Uh, the guy who showed up the Republican baseball practice field was a, a Bernie bro, right? A boomer guy, Hodgkins or whatever his name is, angry white, uh, boomer left wing dude, right? So how long is it going to be before the next Bernie bro decides to take up arms and start, you know, shooting up like, you know, fake news terrorist uh, outlets, you know? They're accusing Bernie of, um, you know, being a Russian asset. I mean, all right, well, you know, we're, a bit, we're, we're censored off the internet, essentially, so including myself. So, you know, well, we're not there to stop it, so too bad. <laughs> You know, uh, no skin off my back. I just have to hope that I don't happen to walk by, like, the CNN headquarters here in New York City. Not that I would be walking around there, but I know it's somewhere in midtown Manhattan, right? And I just happen to be caught in the crossfire. That, that's my biggest concern, right, if I were to walk around. So, uh, yeah. But remember, if I die, I was murdered, all right? I will never resort to suicide. I fight to the very fucking end, all right? You know, because I value my life, all right? Because I've already had, like, 10 near death experiences in my life or eight all right and i'm still alive and kicking so uh yeah it's pretty hard to get rid of someone like me uh reconnect all right anyway bitcoin's at 96.31 it's flatline litecoin's at 75.62 it's flatlining a little bit towards the upside so that's a pretty good side for litecoin uh yeah bitcoin scam the bitcoin scam coins are you know whatever Doggy coins at 321.5 million market cap. It's flatlining a little bit to the downside. So yeah, a lot of losses here still. Yeah, something's got uh, something's really got the rich people spooked. Maybe it really is the coronavirus again. Hmm. Um, but I mean, yeah, if uh, if countries in Europe, and especially Italy, are starting to shut down businesses because of coronavirus, that's actually going to have a direct impact uh, on the economy worldwide. So, uh, but like I said, I retweeted an article from Fox News where uh, some Jewish guy from University of Austin, Texas. I mean, his name doesn't sound Jewish when I look at him. He's def he definitely looks Jewish, right? I mean, I, you know, I live in New York City. I see Jewish people all the time. And he said he actually successfully 3D mapped the coronavirus. So, because um, they actually were replicating the virus in the in in the lab there. So, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, so yes, we do have coronavirus in controlled, very controlled environments here in America, and you don't see a crazy outbreak happening, right? There's a reason why we need to, you know, bring the virus here so we can study it and create a vaccine, right? Because, you know, that's how it works. Vaccines come from the virus. I mean, I don't know how many of you know that. I mean, obviously a lot of conservatives don't actually know that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and try to convince a boomer of that, you know, a co conservative boomer just doesn't believe it. Uh, in science, right? You know, because they're so jacked up on the whole, like, well, you know, climate change is a scam. So unfortunately, they translate that to all science is a scam. And that's not true. All right. Uh, so I, I, I don't even honestly know how the hell we're going to get past this problem. Mm. But again, with my game coming out and me refining my story, even quest text. You know, I might be able to put a dent on the on the ignorance stuff. And if people still don't listen, then well, you know, well, well <laughs> okay, boomer. <laughs> twenty one thirty seven, so twenty one point thirty seven cents for Steam. So it's flatlining a little bit. It's down to two point thirty seven percent, but yeah, you know, it's kind of looking flatline. Uh, nothing of note here in GBTC. Uh, yesterday's markets were down a little bit. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Yeah, so overall, the rich are just like, yeah, screw, screw this. So right now, JMC Coin actually has a major buying pressure. Today is actually, it actually just happened within like the last 30 minutes. Unable to log in. I don't know why Bit, 
uh, Bit Heroes has been so fucking unstable lately. Um, but yeah, four hundred dollars worth of buying pressure in JMC coins. So JMC coins actually on the up and up. Uh, so that's actually kind of nice. Four of four coins still kind of struggling ish, but it's still a little stable. It's at three to four, right? Uh, I'm actually somewhere. In, I'm actually in the front line of this giant four sub Satoshi sell order for four of four coin, but it's a. Uh, pr- but my next round of uh, four of four coins is gonna have to get in the back of this giant ass uh, sell order. But what's important is to see the buying pressure here, and there's plenty of coins that are wanting to be bought for four of four. So I think things are gonna be stable for a little while. Um, but you know, obviously, it's not it's not anywhere near outside the woods. Two by two coins at fifty nine sixty. Uh, this is a pretty solid you know, uh, buying buying pressure. Look at all these large orders. So uh, so crypto, I think, is pretty stable for now. And JMC coins, you know, going up a little bit in the world. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if it maintains this, right? I mean the. I mean the APR is so low on it, so that like you know it's because uh, it's because it was reconfigured to be a stable coin now, you know a high interest stable coin, right? Sixty two and a half percent is not great compared to four hundred four or three sixty five or uh, three sixty five coin two by two coin. I don't know why they didn't call it three sixty five coin, but I guess they wanted to be a little different from four hundred four. Uh, but with that being said, it's like a very good high interest bank account kind of thing, especially if I hook this up to uh, coinpayments.net and then, you know, hook it up as a micro, as a payment option uh, for my game. So, you know, it's uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Kapow Koi is still pretty steady. 42.03, 42.20 Satoshis of a dog coin up to 49.77 Satoshis of a dog coin. So it's not, uh, so it's doing all right. It's pretty stable. Um, I mean, at this point, I cannot convince Mitch that, you know, he should have some compound coins. But obviously, I'm still making, I'm still building up my stack. But it's actually pretty hard now because there's so many compound coins out there. So the, uh, the let's close Albion here over here. So the, um, uh, what should I call it? The difficult, the difficulty is so high that the ability to mint a lot of coins quickly is actually very difficult. And um, basically, you can only have a max block size of a hundred million. Well, it's actually a hundred million coins minus one. But I don't feel like saying nine 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 nine. Um, actually, that would only be a reference if you ever actually watched my movie before I took it off Amazon. Uh, but yeah, so basically, it's very hard to mint new coins. So the rate of inflation is actually a lot less than 250% APR. I think it's going to be, I don't know, I'm going to guess around 200%, all right, thanks to difficulty. I'm kind of hoping 404 coin would have the same difficulty increase, right? So this price would stop going down so much because, you know, increased difficulty means lower APR effectively. Uh, and of course, it's still stuck at 300.85. So, yeah, it's. Well, uh, but oh well, you take what you can get. So anyway, compound coin's still pretty stable. All right, so I don't really care about the news. Um, in fact, maybe we'll just uh, skip it today. Um, let's see, Johnson. Okay. Oh yeah. So yeah. See, this is really important. Cryptocurrency is so good because it's hard to censor people with it, right? Discrimination is a form of censorship, but we don't call it that. We just call it racism, um, which, of course, doesn't exist if you uh, listen to Jesse Lee Peterson. It, you know, he just he just reduces it more to it's just simply evil, which is technically true. Um, but uh, whatchamacallit, yeah, this is going to be really good because now uh, everyone will just have uh, a truly free f- free money. It will be independent of globalist. Uh, well, I mean, globalists will still try to manipulate cryptocurrency, but they're going to have a significantly more uh, difficult time doing it because short of just outright banning it, which they can't. I mean, it's cats out of the bag now, right? It's like trying to say, let's ban the Internet. Let's ban cell phones. You know, like this, the moment you say that, Everyone's going to pick up a gun and probably blow your head off, right? Because they love their internet and cell phones so much, right? <laughs> so so Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is now basically approaching the same thing, right? I don't know what kind of level of uh, adoption or fanatical, like, we just have to have it. It's a need now. It's a bare, it's a bare necessity, right? Once, once something becomes considered a bare necessity, like food and clothing and water and um, shelter. 
game over, my friends. Game over. And that's good for us, right? Because obviously we want to make sure that we have access to our crypto at all times. Uh, this would be ultra bearish. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be bearish simply because we've already been through our bear market, all right? We've already been pounded in the ass without consent for like a year and a half or two years or however the hell long, you know, we've been doing this for. The only reason why it would actually go bearish would probably be because of something fundamentally bad. So coronavirus would definitely be on the top of that list. Uh, Michael Bloomberg suddenly spiking up in the polls. Um... Actually, today is supposed... Oh, yeah, so Nick Fuentes is doing a special Saturday D-Live today because today is some kind of special primary day. So I think it's the Nevada caucus or whatever. So I'm actually curious to see how this is going to go. So far, it looks like everyone's just going to assume that Bernie Sanders is going to come out way ahead, which is a shame. But ultimately, I do want Bernie Sanders to win because I want him to, you know, make Donald Trump sweat a little bit and put pressure on Trump to actually do something for once. Uh, Bitcoin Cash facing slow death, uh, blah, 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 drug dealer, uh, loses private keys to seize, uh, okay, well, yeah, and obviously the drug dealers ain't gonna help him, so, you know, because if they put a gun to his head and kill him or whatever, or incapacitate him, then they're definitely never gonna get the keys <laughs> to this Bitcoin. Yeah, see, that's why Bitcoin is so good, because, like, it's so defensive. Like, you can, you just cannot coerce people with it, all right? It's, it's so different from fiat currency of today, where everything's built on manipulation and coercion, and, like, you know, they put a gun in your hand and says, use, our, the US, use the U.S. dollar or else, all right? They'll make you an offer you can't refuse, you know, Italian style. Because Nick Fuentes is very proud of being Italian. Uh, if one was a case of Bitcoin hate saving, uh, did he do, uh, how ever wonder how rich you'd be by now? Bitcoin gains since 2010. Well, I have an idea, all right. In fact, you see that, all right. Yeah, I actually think like on the next bull run, once I make my money, I'll actually reveal how, ultimately how much money I turned my $500 uh, that I started with on November 16, 2016, into what I have now. Because in the future, I'll have a different number, which obviously will not be revealed. Uh, in fact, I may never reveal it because at that point, I assume it will probably be seven figures. If, if again, I'm correct in that Bitcoin skyrockets at the next at this current bull run peak, when, once it realizes itself, to 500000 or probably so far, it's actually looking like a million dollars. Right? But I'll have to definitely keep a track of the market cap and the 24-hour volume to make sure the math uh adds up but the problem is the numbers are so big and there's so many variables and there needs to be a lot of time before i can make my prediction more accurate but it's definitely going straight up that's all i know uh that's a good good thing uh let's see oh i forgot to also mention i bought a, i bought a 46 47 dollar game yesterday called battle brothers right because and i kind of just want to hesitate because it's obviously a lot of money um uh, let's see if Google knows it's Steam. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it totally did. So I bought the DLC, and the reason why I bought it is because uh, it's a very similar to Mountain Blade, which I like, but it's also flat terrain 2D. It's going to help inspire me to figure, like, when I do the turn, because my next Zenva course is turn-based strategy game, so this is what this game is. So I want to make sure that I have good material to work with when I make my own game, and then, like, if I get a little stuck, I'll be playing this game and go... Oh yeah, this is how they solved the problem. All right, I'll solve the other problem here. And you know, it makes pretty. It looks pretty good. Uh, it's got some de decent graphics. Um, so it's got some pixelation, but it's actually it's also got a lot of hand drawn art and assets here, as you can see. Can we make this bigger? Yeah. So um, so it's pretty nice, and the music's very good. And the guy even sells the soundtrack here. So uh, so yeah, and that's gonna be important too because. You know, I because uh, my music has to be exclusive to my uh, IP, for, especially the first song that I'm going to commission, which is I already have the guy in mind to do it. So uh, you know, it's going to be like the, it's basically the theme song for the show, right? And it's probably going to also be the main theme for my character because that's how that's how you because music is supposed to help build your story. So you know, like when you think of Star Wars, right? You think about the light side theme. It's you think of Obi Wan, Luke Skywalker, right? I think it's called Light of the Force. You know, there's a consistent there's a consistent reason for that. It's because the internalization of the character, right? All the story beats, all the stuff they went through, all the memories you had, you know, traveling with Obi Wan and Luke Skywalker, starting from A New Hope. You know, that stays with you the whole time. 
right? And then, of course, Darth Vader's badass because, you know, you find out he's Luke's father. And then he has his music tied to that, right? So it's hard to explain, but all the pivotal moments that you remember is also associated with that music. That's why the music is so important. And it's obviously important that the music, when you do associate it with it, is very good because you have to repeat it all the time. You know, uh, show business and entertainment is ultimately about repetition. That's why we keep doing the same shit over and over again. If any of you ever worked on a movie or TV show like I did when I was uh, doing background acting work and doing actual acting work on my movie, we have to keep doing shit over and over and over again, right? Because you got to get to make sure the t uh, take is correct. So anyway, this is a pretty, this game is actually pretty good, pretty fun. I had to buy it last night though, and I played it for like. 45 to 60 minutes before uh yeah before i wound up screwing up and then just have to delete the save you know because it was a learning experience save uh also was late so i had to go to bed but um oh yeah so this game's pretty strict but well it's not that strict but i bought a bow and i gave him a quiver of bolts i was like wondering why i couldn't shoot my uh bow and arrow because <laughs> i equipped him with the wrong thing and i was in the middle of a battle i was like Ah, oh, shit. Because at first, I couldn't shoot, so I assumed I was out of range. But it turns out I gave him the wrong quiver. And my character wound up being completely worthless, and then I lost somebody as a result of that. Uh, so, um, yeah, next time, uh, I'll have to make sure I... <laughs> I give people the correct uh, ammunition type. So, I mean, I think some of you have guns in real life, so it's uh, it, it's relatable, right? Let's say you have, like, a... I don't know. Let's say you have a nine millimeter Glock, but then you for and then and then you forget to and then you forget to load it with like, and then you happen to have like I don't know four forty five Magnum ACP ammo. That's clearly not nine millimeter ammo. So obviously your gun's not going to fire because <laughs> it's not even the same ammo type. So that's essentially what I did uh, in Battle Brothers. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good investment so that I can make a very good I can make my game better or keep me on the right path. Oh, then the other thing is this game company. <clears throat> uh, they actually have a very good design philosophy. They want to be indie. They want to uh, wait. That's uh, no, that's about this game. Read more. Uh, read more. Here we go. About us. We are an indie game developer company in Hamburg, Germany. We are devoted to making great games that we want to play ourselves. That's exactly me. When With Battle Brothers, we strive to reflect the creativity, complexity, and originality from the old days when game developers were passionate gamers and not corporate businessmen. I actually aspire to be both of these things. While doing this, we took a lot of inspiration from some of the best games out there. The original XCOM, Warhammer, Shadow of the Horn Rat, and Jagged Alliance. I've never played these latter two games, but I know Jagged Alliance was basically Wasteland and was the foundation for Fallout, for the Fallout series. So it was, uh, so I was definitely like, yeah, I'm going to become like these guys, but I want to become a big business because in order to get what I need, I need to basically become the next Blizzard Entertainment. So the hard part is going to be figuring out how to balance being a corporate man versus <coughs> being a passionate gamer. And Riot Games and the Path of Exile people uh, have done a pretty good job of showing how it can be done. So it's, total, it's totally possible. If you're really greedy, just make another video game and just put it on the mobile market. Just make a, make a mobile game for the mobile market. You know, milk that for all the money it's worth, and then still use some of that money to, you know, build a real game, you know, with with actual passion, right? Though, though in my case, my uh, mobile, once I have a crew of employees, you know, they'll, they'll make a good mobile game. Actually, I'm really thinking about, like, a, a Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes or Dragon Champions hero collection type of game. Those games are actually very fun. You know, I'm, I'm still loving it. Um, <clears throat> crypto investors are being... Trump that's going to win the White House. Bitcoin signal spreading across. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't even care about this. I mean, let's just get the... Uh, let's just get the... Um, uh, I really like this, but... It's gr New Jersey Democrat sponsors Digital Asset Blockchain Tech Act to regulate Bitcoin crypto. Uh, eh, all right, I guess we could read this. Oh, yeah. So right now, Bernie is skyrocketing. Everyone's going down, including Bloomberg. So, all right, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, because, 
you know, I have to admit, I really was expecting Bloomberg to be a much bigger threat. But I mean, if he's just going to flop so fast, then you know what? I'm glad that he's going to waste all his money. Not that he cares anyway. New Jersey Democrat sponsors digital asset blockchain tech actor. Oh, yeah, we read that. Uh, it will require crypto related businesses to acquire a license to comply with set standards in order to operate in the state. Okay, so basically they're going to do the same thing as the retards in New York City did. Yeah, so this is bad. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. You must take steps to protect consumers looking to invest in crypto while also allowing the sector to continue developing expand New Jersey. <clears throat> Lessons will be granted to build a prime bank and sharing a mandate number of disclosures. Okay, also spread a list of any license for opportunity suspension, da da da. Bill Moore Trust of Lopez says business would also have to disclose a schedule of related fees and changes and the be transparent about the markets by telling their clients about the volatile nature of crypto and, and the risk of losing it all. You check the full announcement here. All right, well, uh, I guess, well, I mean, coinpayments.net still does work in New Jersey, but if this thing passes, it's possible that they'll have to include New Jersey on the shit list too uh yeah god this is very irritating um let me see coin payments uh supported coins um i think it's under fac now uh restricted jurisdictions um Okay, so it's still restricted in Washington and New York. So, because Florida also is not too crypto friendly, but they're not overly aggressive about it either. So the problem is when I get servers, let me see. Um, PhotonEngine.com. Let's see, they had a map. Uh, Photon pun? Um, pricing. Let's see, it might be under, oh no, here it is. Okay, uh, we've got USA East, Washington, D.C. Okay, Washington, D.C. is fine because that's a jurisdiction into itself. Uh, otherwise, it could be considered Virginia or West Virginia. All right, so we're pretty good here. San Jose is California. Oh, wow. Yeah, coin payments is accepted in California. And that's like the most litigious place in the country, essentially. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, we're not going to be hosting a server in China anytime soon, so we'll uh, we'll pass on that. Europe is Amsterdam. Uh, Playfab.com. The reason I'm looking at this is because I'm going to have a website hosting the game as well, and that's where we're going to put in coin payments. So I need to look at where the physical location of the servers are so that coin payments doesn't have a like hissy fit. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Indie Studio. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I think. Oh yeah, I think it's in their documentation. But I think they're essentially the same thing because I think they all use the Amazon Web Service servers anyway. So, yeah. Uh, what happened to that article? Oh, uh, I didn't even like that anyway. I kind of like this. Uh, can you have crypto by Libras? This is the Steam icon, like Steam cryptocurrency. So, all right, whatever. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use this. I don't really care. If you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from, or on my uh, YouTube's at youtube.com forward slash. Uh, what? I changed it. Oh yeah, YouTube said it would take a while for this to change uh yes oh okay yeah there we go it works oh that's right because i had to change the url and the browser okay so both urls are still active but it's uh it's now jmc radio so it's now nice brandable short because i was trying to think how does jesse lee pearson do, do his thing he calls it jlp talk right but jlp radio would also have worked In my case jmc radio in fact my playlist is actually called jmc radio somewhere here um, really? I still have this playlist here? Oh, uh, yeah. See, that was so much thinner back then. That's the one I also still had my glasses. 
Um, oh yeah, a lot of people did not like my movie, so. Uh, yeah, the first two scenes are still here. Oh yeah, so you can actually look at this. Oh yeah, this guy wound up becoming a Bernie bro, and he was very angry that like he didn't get a share of the profits. So like that's kind of reason why I also don't want to work with liberals anymore. They always just demand more shit. Uh, but it was really funny though. You know that that's the really sad part, but eh, that's just how it goes. Uh, no, I did not write the word JMC Radio. What? I always thought I did. Yeah, she might be under. Nope. All right, well, I guess I'll have to, uh, whatever. Yeah. So, anyway, youtube.com forward slash JMC Radio. Smash that subscribe on the right-hand side of this page. And, uh, yeah, because uh, good things are going to happen. So, obviously, I'm done for the day. I've rambled on for a nice long period of 40 uh, and a half minutes. And I'm actually starting to get hungry, even though it's 11.15. Uh, oh, well. Anyway, uh, dress for your day or night. Watch out for the coronavirus. Uh, I would avoid traveling, if possible. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you all in tomorrow's video, which is going to be another slow day. Uh, but you know what? At least cryptocurrency is finally recovering a little bit here in the exotics. But, um, I don't know. I, I think it's just more so because everyone's just, you know, uh, just going into fear mode. So, yeah. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, enjoy your day or night. I'll see you all. Oh, yeah, I already said that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, Judson Chan... JMC coin, 404 coin. I'm really glad I actually got this. Uh, I really managed to get this uh, uh, URL. So, you know, at least we finally have something um, uh, nice and brandable and, re and remembering. Oh, yeah, there you go. JMC radio YouTube icon. So it's looking very good. And, uh, yeah, I really like this uh, icon. You know, it has nothing to really to do with the video.